Good afternoon, everyone. We've all heard about Saharan dust blowing west to east across the ocean. Hurricane Ophelia strong enough to suck that up all the way to the UK. Blood red blocking out the sun. So dark, in fact, they had to turn on their headlights during the middle of the day. Hurricane Irma wiping out 50% of Florida's orange crop. Hurricane Harvey taking the rest of the rice crop. Soft red winter wheat up. Hard red, winter wheat, up. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030 and click the bell to get the latest updates. We've all seen the images from satellites talking about the dust storms from the Saharan region of Africa blowing west to east. We see this every year, and this is some of the catalysts for the storms who see that track across the Atlantic. Dust detected by ozone mapping profiles, you just see where the dust generally blows. It rarely, if ever, makes it northward in a north-south wind pattern. This is a dust concentration from back in July, very apparent where the dust is going. This time, it's very different. You're going to start seeing more strangeness like this North to south wind patterns, this is the grand solar minimum right here as a fingerprint. Wide out for you. This cyclonic spin is pulling something that it does not normally pull up to the north. Now imagine when these storms start spinning to the south in the winter time when they're pulling exceptionally cold air down over Europe. Effect, blood red sun. Interesting photo there at the container terminal. 80 mile an hour winds and dust picked up with Hurricane Ophelia. Plumes of dust landing on cars. So let's start earlier in the afternoon. Skies turning yellow. Starting to darken out the sun to the point where it literally gets so dark and so yellow tinged that the sun is blocked out and they turn on their headlights during the day. Saharan dust storm in the UK. Have to go back in time to find anything like this. Let's jump back over to the United States. 50% of Florida's orange crop wiped out after Hurricane Irma. They're still tallying, but so far this is what they have. Smallest crop since 1942, and they're expecting greater losses. Literally to the point where they don't know if this industry is going to recover down there. Obviously, with Brazil having difficulties and the United States, orange futures up, up, up. Now, I know perhaps not everybody drinks orange juice, and you say, well, I just don't care if orange prices go up. I'm not an orange juice drinker. Hurricane Harvey wipes out a majority of the rice crop in the United States. And maybe you'll say, well, that doesn't matter because I don't eat rice. Wheat futures up. This is the soft red winter wheat following on hard red winter wheat up as well. The harvest for this year is not even in the silos. What had happened when that late season blizzard rolled in, decimating wheat production in Kansas, these prices are gonna climb further and further. This is what's talked about in the grand solar minimum. All of these little losses start to add up. Who's gonna make up for orange production? Nobody. Who's going to make up for the wheat production? It doesn't look like that 8% increase in Russia is going to do much because there's a 10% decrease down in Australia as well. So it seems like it's a balancing act. What's in the silos? What's being stored right now? How long is that going to last? These are the questions we should be asking. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. You can see that these little chips away in our food production are going to continue from this point forward and everything you buy is going to continue to increase in price.